welcome back to my channel. In the previous class, we have discussed embryogeny in dicotyledons and structure of a typical dicot embryo. So, in this class, we are going to discuss about the embryogeny in monocotyledons as well as the typical monocot embryo. In the previous class only, I told you embryogeny, it is the process of formation of embryo from zygote. So, now we are discussing the process of formation of embryo from zygote in case of monocotyledons. You are familiar with monocotyledons and dicotyledons. So, here we are discussing embryogeny in monocotyledons. It is quite similar in case, uh, quite similar to dicotyledons. Let us see how it will be. You know, zygote. So, this zygote, after fertilization, zygote will be formed. Later, zygote develops into embryo. Let us see how this zygote develops into embryo in monocotyledons. So, initially, this is zygote. So, this zygote will elongate and divides by a transverse division resulting in the formation of two cells. So, zygote elongates and divides transversely to form two cells. One is called basal cell, other one is called as a terminal cell. Later, this basal cell. So, this basal cell, uh, this will enlarge us. The basal cell will enlarge us or it will swollen and it is called as a suspensor cell. In the previous class only, I told you the suspensor cell, it can act like a ossorium even in case of monocotyledons also, this basal cell that is towards the micropyla region will, will become large, swollen and it is called as suspensor cell and it can act like a ossorium. And this terminal cell, the terminal cell will divide transversely one more time resulting in the formation of two cells. Here you can see one terminal cell. Later this uh, terminal cell will undergo another transverse division to form two cells which are called as terminal cell and middle cell. And this terminal cell, the top cell or this terminal cell will undergo series of divisions. After series of divisions, this terminal cell you can observe. Here the terminal cell will undergo division. Here also they undergo division. Finally, after series of divisions, this terminal cell will form the plumule and a single cotyledon. As we are discussing monocotyledons, here it will form a single cotyledon. After a series of divisions, this terminal cell will form the plumule and a single cotyledon. And this single cotyledon in monocots is called as scutellum. Here you can see the scutellum. Later we can able to know how it will be formed. So the single cotyledon in monocots is called as scutellum. Try to understand the terminal cell. It will undergo a series of divisions. Later it will form the plumule and a single cotyledon. And this is scutellum. This scutellum will grow rapidly. It will grow rapidly and it will push up the plumule towards one side. You can observe there, this scutellum will grow rapidly so that it will push the plumule towards one side. That's why this plumule will come to lie in a depression. It is like in a depression because of the rapid growth of the scutellum. So that is about the terminal cell and this middle cell. Even this middle cell also undergoes a series of divisions. After series of divisions, this middle cell will form the hypophotide as well as radical. So, terminal cell will produce the plumule and a single cotyledon, and this middle cell will produce the hypophotide and a radical. And even this middle cell will add few cells to this suspensor. So, here you can observe. So, this middle cell will add few more cells to the suspensor. So, that suspensor will act like a, that helps in pushing the embryo into the endosperm. That all you studied. So, that is in embryogeny in case of monocotyledons. And another very interesting thing in monocotyledons is in a certain series or in some series, both this plumule and radical are enclosed by are covered by a sheet that sheet is produced by the scutellum are called coleoptile and coleorhiza so here 
The plumule is enclosed by a sheath called as a coleoptile and the radical is also enclosed by a sheath called as a coleorhiza. Yeah, usually these two are produced from the scutella. I repeat the embryogeny in monocotyledons. Initially the zygote will elongate and undergoes division that is a transverse division to form two cells, a basal cell and a terminal cell. Later, this basal cell towards the micropylar region will become large, swollen and called suspensor cell and which will act as a hastoria. And this terminal cell will again divide one more time transversely to form two cells. One is a terminal cell, other one is called as middle cell. And this terminal cell, after a series of divisions, it will form the plumule and a single cotyledon called as scutella. And this scutellum will grow rapidly and it will push the plumule towards one side. That's why the plumule will lie in a depression. And this middle cell also after a series of division, it will form the hypocotyle as well as a radical. And even it will add few cells to this suspensor. And in some series, both the plumule and the radical are enclosed by a sheath called as polyoptile and polyorhiza respectively. So that is embryogeny in monocotyledons. Now we we'll discuss the mature uh, monocot embryo. So later this embryo will later develop into a mature monocot embryo. So this is the structure of typical monocot embryo. So a typical monocot embryo, it is mainly comprising of a embryonal axis. So at the, this complete part is called as embryonal axis uh, and a single cotyledon called as scutellum. You should remember only in case of monocotyledons we are using the term scutellum. Scutellum refers to a single cotyledon in monocots. So this uh, monocot embryo comprising of an embryonal axis and a single cotyledon called scutellum. And you know that this scutellum will lie towards one side or lateral side of the embryonal axis. The reason already I told you, as this scutellum grows rapidly, the plumule will be towards one side. So even we can say that for the embryonal axis, the scutellum is situated towards the one side. That is scutellum. And this embryonal axis, the embryonal axis at its lower end, it comprises of radical and root cap. In the previous class only I told you, radical is the future root and plumule is the future shoot. So this embryonal axis at its lower end, it comprises of radical and radical is enclosed by root cap. Here, this radical and root cap both are enclosed in a undifferentiated sheath called as coleorhiza. Radical and root cap both are enclosed in an undifferentiated sheath called as coleorhiza. So this is the portion we will call it as a coleorhiza. And so the embryonal axis, the portion of the embryonal axis which is near to the attachment of scutella. So this portion we can call it as a epicotyle. You know that epicotyle, there is above the level of cotyledon, hypocotyle, below the level of cotyledon. We can say this epicotyle, it is the portion of the embryonal axis near to the attachment of scutella. So this epicotyle, this epicotyle comprises of a shoot apex or stem tape which can be called as plumule. And plumule is the future shoot along with the plumule, it also contains certain leaf primordia. Both this plumule and leaf primordia are covered by a sheath called as coleoptile. Here, radical and root cap are covered by a sheath called as coleorhiza. But here, the plumule and leaf primordia are enclosed by, are covered by a sheath called as coleoptile. And here you can observe another structure called as epiplast. What is this epiplast means? It is the rudiment of the second cotyledon. Usually, two cotyledons will be exist both in monocots as well as in dicots. In dicots, both the cotyledons will start to develop. But here, one cotyledon will be developing, a single cotyledon. The other rudimentary part lies here. So, rudimentary in the sense, it is an immature cotyledon. As it is an immature, rudimentary, only one cotyledon will arise in case of monocot embryo. 
So we recall the few, uh, recall the points we have discussed here. A typical monocot embryo comprises of the embryonal axis as well as a single cotyledon. The single cotyledon is called as cutellum and it is situated towards one side of the embryonal axis. And this embryonal axis at its lower end it comprises of radical and root cap. Both are covered in an undifferentiated sheet called as coleorrhiza. And the portion of the embryonal axis near to the attachment of scutellum is called as epicotyl. And this epicotyl comprising of the stem tip called as a plumule. Along with the plumule, it also contains a tile leaf primordia. Both are enclosed by a sheath called as coleoptyl. And this epiblast, it is the rudiment of the second cotyledon. Or we can say it is an immature second cotyledon. So that completes the structure of typical monocot embryo. So these two, the embryo, either dicot embryo or monocot embryo, these two are very very important. I, you will get any one in your examination. So both are very very important. That completes the embryogeny A monocotyledons and till now we have discussed the embryogeny in the next class we are going to discuss about the seed